Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So today uh, I'm trying to start 2021 right and I'm trying to do it by being as helpful as I can and uh, for me personally I think one of the most helpful quote unquote, video series ever if you will is probably the content progression guides where I do my best to recommend the order of content I feel players should largely choose to complete or explore in order to progress the smoothest in the game and i did this one last time in may of 2020 and uh, that was straight after my shave so you guys can remember how i look without a beard and i employed a bit different uh strategy there basically i listed all of the content every single variant act five and every single chapter of act six and abyss and Labyrinth of Legends, whether when to complete it, when to explore it. But uh, the more content is available in the game, and uh, the more different roster abilities and requirements we encounter, the harder and harder it is to be precise using this. And I don't think this is the best method of doing this going forward. So we're going to move away from that, and uh, I'm going to do something slightly different here. I condensed it all basically to 11 points and uh, we're going to be talking more and more about why, when, where and how uh, also how grouped several items together. So this piece of content, this video in particular is assuming you have Act 4 and Realm of Legends, let's say, explored and you have Act 5 completion done. So the first thing is always important to reach the next progression level as early as you can, especially when it comes to becoming Cavalier or becoming Thronebreaker. So my first advice where to start off is, if possible at all, go and become Cavalier. That's the very beginning of your journey towards kind of like the top end content. Now, once you have become Cavalier, you kind of want to forget about act content for a bit because they are definitely not the best rewards for effort piece of content. And you want to move on to the point number two right here and you want to start doing variant content completion runs because the amount of rank up gems and the value of those rank up gems that you can obtain there is quite insane. Because you're going to be saving yourself a lot of tier 4 basics, tier 2 alphas, tier 4 class catalyst crystals. Not to mention that when you are getting these exploration rank 3 to rank 4 5 star gems, they are becoming more and more valuable due to champion reworks. And it's probably by far the best place where to acquire champion rank up materials. So once you have become Kowalier, I think the second next logical and best step is to work towards completing all of the variants, maybe aside from variant 1, because variant 1, for being one of the first four variants with significantly poorer reward structure compared to the last two, is also the hardest one, so I probably just want to leave it for a while. Now, once you have actually started to establish your roster already, it's kind of like a grindy bit. Because there is this power level difference from when you are able to complete, let's say, a varied piece of content and when you are able to start exploring the same piece of content, especially if you're kind of stretching yourself. And I recommend going back and fully exploring Act 5 for that because you still get relatively decent rewards. Well, there's still the 5-star Awakening gem. There are still the Tier 2 Alphas, I think, and Tier... Five basics as well when you fully explore variant five act five and they're still relevant resources for your current progression level for sure it's just going to take a while but at the same time you're going to be giving yourself time to develop your roster because the next point as you had started completing variants for you is pretty much go and explore the same variant piece of content because variants for most part are shorter and easier than act six chapters let's say and they're definitely well well more rewarding so before you start 
completing or exploring deeper in Act 6. I definitely recommend focusing on variant content, perhaps except variant 1 again, because it is quite tricky for worst amount of rewards for effort in variant at all. Um, my personal recommendations of which variants to explore first would definitely be variant 5, variant 6, because they have significantly improved the rewards. And then variant 4 is also very easy and I think probably the easiest one to explore if you have a 1 star Hulk. Now, all that put together, I think if you are able to start exploring variant content, and again, there is no right way to tell for me to tell you which is the first variant you should explore because it entirely depends on your roster do you have many mystic and spider verse champions and jump in variant 5 if you have been villain centric by accident then definitely variant 6 each variant has separate set of requirements and uh, it entirely depends on who you have happened to rank up so far few recommendations for variants in general definitely have to go to Venom. Venom is fantastic for Variant 6, Variant 5, Variant 2, and overall I think the best Variant Champion. I think also Sentinel is an incredibly noteworthy Variant Champion because he's great for Variant 3, he's great for Variant 6, and Variant 2 as well. But other than that, you really just need to Check what your roster is capable and where do you feel you can have the most progress in and then take your pick because everything starting from variant 2 to variant 6 has relatively similar power level and the requirements are quite unique and each roster is different and therefore it's impossible for me to tell you yes do this one first then that one but overall as a generic rule of thumb you want to go from bigger numbers first the smaller ones you want to do variants 4, 5, 6 first and then 3 and 2 as last ones because they reward less and are trickier. Right, now that the variants have been done, it's time to complete Act 6. Now this might be a bit of a struggle but it's going to be a good way to test yourself and completion run in itself isn't too bad in Act 6. So once you have completed Act 6, that's the first time you can technically become Thronebreaker. And even though at the moment it's quite unlikely for a person to be Thronebreaker before you have explored Act 6, I think as the time goes by and TF5 class catalysts are more and more common, it's going to become an easier, easier thing to acquire. And this is the first point where it's possible to become Thronebreaker, because that is the requirement, be it Act 6 and have rank 3, 6 star. But I think going on in the future, that requirement is going to be easier and easier to achieve. Right, and then at that point, we can say it's time to start exploring Act 6, because 6.1 is significantly easier, but there's another reason behind that. Because variants 5 and 6, when you explore them, will already give you solid chunks of tier 5 class catalysts. The reason why you want to explore 6.1 is to have access to another chunk of tier 5 class catalyst. Because at the point when you complete and explore 7.1, you will have to select, or take a piece of selector basically. And uh, there is a solid chance that here, combined with the whole monthly event things for Cavalier players, combined with deals if you happen to buy any, combined with Alliance quest or whatever, that at this point, point, whoops, this point, that's uh, wrong numbering here. At point number seven, there we go. Point number seven uh, is when you can expect, not expect, but large portion of people would become throne breakers, which is quite important. But it's definitely not a guarantee. That's kind of like the realest, really earliest, realistic hope to become. And now I have completion exploration of Abyss. Because Abyss is definitely significantly better rewarding piece of content than Act 6. Act 6 overall still is a complete disaster, a shit show. A uh, really, really depressing, disappointing piece of content for most part, and uh, just 
doesn't make anyone involved feel good. Kabam should feel bad about designing the piece of content, and most of the players feel bad trying to do that piece of content. It's shit. It's really shit. Even after, quote unquote, rebalances. So my personal recommendation is Abyss. Abyss definitely rewards significantly more rewards for your time investment. Problem is, it's also more resource costly than an average Act 6 exploration. Abyss is not necessarily harder to explore Act 6. It's definitely not as long as it is to explore Act 6. But it's also more unit intensive because you are guaranteed to die in pretty much every fight. So if you can afford and if you have amassed a stash of resources, definitely my recommendation is to focus on at least completion of Abyss and perhaps putting exploration of Abyss at the very end. But if you can do it and if you have the roster, explore the Abyss before you explore Act 6. That's my recommendation. But again, it entirely depends whether you do have the champions that you need for Abyss. And if you don't, then that's why they are in yellow. Just push them down for whenever you get to it. And start by exploring 6.4, because that's another point where you can get a selector. And it's very, very likely that at this point you'd already possibly can become Thronebreaker if you do have decent 6 star champions. And then explore 6.3, and then leave the shit show 6.2, and namely 6.25 to the end. Right, we do have some more comments. Ooh, why did this get... Okay, let's leave it here. Okay, so Road to the Labyrinth is not mandatory anymore to do Labyrinth, and Labyrinth itself is only worth it if you can do it with minimal item usage. You can skip Road to the Labyrinth, but I do recommend maybe not necessarily exploring it, but at least going through the initial chapters because low-key they are holding decent chunk of units that you can grab quite easily. And uh, if you don't have any other piece of content, you can dip in there but it really isn't worth the effort to explore the final chapters of Road to Labyrinth. Now, Labyrinth is only worth doing if you can do it with minimal item use. If you have like a maxed out Colossus or a rank 4 or higher Aegon, Guillotine 2099, or you're very good Ghost player, basically, if you can do an entire path of Labyrinth in like 5 revives or 10 revives, it's well worth doing. And as a general rule, I believe that Labyrinth does make any player who enters there a better player by the end of it, because you do learn to intercept better, you do learn to understand the AI better. So I personally do recommend exploring the Labyrinth, but it definitely isn't important anymore, and it definitely can be bypassed very easily without much trouble. Then we have try to push yourself early in monthly side events. Huge rewards there. And that's very true. As you progress, as soon as you become Kvalier, quite arguably the most realistic way for you to gain biggest amount of rewards will be the side events. And uh, don't sell yourself short. Do try to push yourself. It's probably also reasonable to invest some items in order to be able to beat the higher and harder difficulties. Every time you see like a YouTuber do these new account challenges, these side events is large part of the reason why they're able to progress as fast as they are. Because for newer accounts and new progressing accounts, it's very important to get the resource from there. Another huge advice I can give uh, after you become Cavalier or at the time you're about to become Cavalier, try to get an alliance that primarily focuses a on AQ and gets decent amount of glory because glory star will by far be your most useful resource to take up more and more champions. Truth to be told, Alliance War, at a stage where you are trying to progress through here and maybe, let's say, first six points, first seven points, Alliance War, I don't think should be any player's focus, really. Locking in eight champions three, for three days a week, or four days a week, or whatever, how much it works in, for an account that has all that content to do, I don't think it's a wise decision for the rewards it offers. And let's face it, Lion's War in lower tiers doesn't really offer all that much. I think uh, definitely, if you're trying to push your account and progress as quickly as you can, you're going to be doing yourself a favor 
if you kind of do Alliance Ward extremely casually, or just don't do it at all, and focus on Alliance Quest and uh, Event Quest and the permanent piece of content, and you can start getting into the Alliance War once you get closer and closer to finishing that list that I showed earlier. And uh, last mentions, uh, arenas. I can't really advise about arenas. I'm really not a grinder myself. So you're going to have to figure that bit out by yourself. And incursions. Incursions are also very, very useful extremely early on. But later on, I don't think they're all that vital. I mean, they definitely can be helpful. But if you don't have the time for them, then I think they would be the first ones on the chopping block and less important than the rest of this stuff here. Either way, I hope you guys have enjoyed today's video. I hope this is helpful, and if you feel it is helpful, please forward the video to your friends, alliance mates, everybody who is trying to progress in 2021 in Mortal Concept Champions. So check out the video description. We do have Discord server, line group, Facebook page, merch store, tons of cool stuff happening on the channel. And uh, yeah, I'm going to catch you guys soon. See ya.